really today we're going to work on expanding out um, our dimension model a little bit more. So yesterday we built a couple of these hierarchies in practice and I want to talk about, about uh, the theory behind what we're building over there. So firstly, um, anybody want to hazard, hazard a guess as to what the difference is between an attribute and a hierarchy? Okay, so, uh, oops, I wasn't actually trying to jump forward. Okay, so the, the idea with exposing an attribute and, and building a hierarchy, well, what is the difference really between those two? So, um, an attribute about a customer is something that describes that customer. So an attribute about the customer is what city is he from, um, what, what state is uh, that customer or does that customer reside in? Um, what gender is he? Is he married? Is he not? Now, if we think back to the stuff that we built yesterday, all of the things that were listed down the left-hand side, those, those are attributes. Those are things that describe the customer. Now, by default, we can expose those attributes and just have a flat um, list of them. As soon as we call it a um, hierarchy, we're actually defining the way that a... Uh, user is navigating the cube. So that really is, is the difference between it. You've got an attribute, it's a particular thing that describes a customer. A hierarchy is a collection of attributes that uh, um, you actually use to navigate. So we talk about uh, attributes and hierarchies. If we take it one level deeper, we've got the, the hierarchies that we created yesterday. We created a flat hierarchy and gender is really a flat hierarchy, it's a one level hierarchy. Um, we've got a perhaps a title of a user or a title of a user or a customer and that's really a flat hierarchy again. We've also got a multi-level type of uh, hierarchy where we might say okay we want to look at all the list of departments and for each department we want to see what the titles are within that department and within those titles for instance maybe the title is uh, business analyst we know that we've got, oh, sorry, it seems to be on uh, autoplay. Let me just switch that so that it stops flipping forward automatically. Um, okay, I think that'll be better. Okay, so we've got that drill down, and perhaps the drill down is the business intelligence department the title that we drill down into is business analyst and we've got a couple of different business analysts so we've got a multi-level hierarchy over there now we also have the idea of uh, self-referencing or a parent-child hierarchy now a parent-child hierarchy is saying we don't really know how many levels there are going to be we know that we've got pe people in our organization and one person reports to another person and perhaps as somebody gets more senior you've taken him on he becomes a team member and you actually add another level. So you don't have a defined level of saying, well, we know that it goes department, title, employee. We're just saying that person X reports to person Y, person Y reports to person Z. Um, and we want to be able to navigate that quite easily in the queue. Now, if you've ever tried to do self-referencing hierarchies in SQL, while they're completely possible, there's a little bit of work that you have to do in order to report off them in any sort of meaningful way. The good news is that analysis services helps uh, this problem quite a lot. The bad news is that it is quite a difficult problem and there are some performance implications of using a parent-child hierarchy instead of using a normal hierarchy. So why are there performance implications? Well, the main thing is if we've got aggregations on a cube, we can say for every employee, um, perhaps we're looking at their number of hours worked in a month and we're looking at their salary. We can write an aggregation across the employee for a month. We can do the same thing at a title level. We can do the same thing at a department level. And analysis services knows enough about the structure to actually build those aggregations. If you build a parent-child hierarchy, analysis services doesn't know what the actual structure is going to be until it looks at the data and it doesn't actually have enough information 
start building aggregations at those levels. And that really gives you um, the, the underlying reason why a parent-child hierarchy might give you uh, some bad performance. Now, does anybody else want to give me another reason why you would want to use a parent-child hierarchy? No guesses? It's uh, easy to use and maybe it's uh, simple to understand. Okay, so it, it, uh, I'd say a parent-child hierarchy is about as easy to use for a user as a normal hierarchy. It sometimes is easier to build, definitely. Um, so one of the other things that you do get with a parent-child hierarchy that you don't get with the normal um, hierarchy is you can do something called custom rollups. So to give you an idea of where you would use a custom rollup, the classic example is a general ledger application. So a general ledger application, you've got various accounts, um, and account codes roll up into other account codes, and sometimes you actually have weightings for those account codes, and, and the rollup doesn't necessarily just say, well, summate this. Sometimes you're saying, this account um, actually gets excluded when you roll up to the account above it, even though it's its, it's parent. And parent-child hierarchies and analysis services give you the ability to define those rollups using MDX. It is a little bit more of a complex type of implementation, and really the main place you would use it is on a, an accounting system. Um, we aren't going to spend much time on that, but if you ever encounter that problem, that's where you would start looking for the solution. Okay, so we've spoken a little bit about um, the attribute relationships yesterday in the practical sense. Now, the idea with the attribute relationships is to enable analysis services to actually have this in-depth understanding of the structure that you're building. So um, the first thing is if analysis services knows that... Uh, employees roll up into specific titles like business analyst and then the business analysts roll up into specific departments it actually knows where it can uh, where, where how it should store these things to give it the most efficient um, storage now we spoke yesterday about flexible versus uh, rigid attribute relationships and, and the difference there is simply that there's a difference in how analysis services stores them and it gives you a speed benefit because analysis services knows how I'm storing this. It's not going to change over time. Therefore, I can optimize it more. So really, the attribute relationships. The second thing is that it's giving you um, a boost in speed. 